Uh, first, yeah, thank you for taking a little bit of time to talk to, talk to you about the movie and congratulations on this amazing story, you know, working with Chloe Chow and the story was something out of this world. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. It's nice to talk to you. Uh, we got a lot to talk a lot to talk about. I, first, I want to talk about your audition and how much, I know in Marvel, how much did you know about your character coming into the audition and what was your first reactions when you, when you, when you knew how complex uh, was Fright? Um, I actually didn't really find out how much I was in the movie script until I literally like signed my contract and had gotten the role, already negotiated everything. They don't tell you anything until you, you sign your life away, basically. <laughs> But when I got the audition, it's really just Google. Like I Googled who Sprite was and what the Eternals were, and I saw that they were comics. And it was, it was exciting to know that I'd be a superhero and a new um, addition to the MCU, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was a very long, hard process. They didn't tell me much. Everything was so secretive. Um, I, I couldn't tell my family. I couldn't tell like my grandparents, my friends, people were mad at me because I couldn't say anything because I was terrified. Um, because of, you know, all the NDAs you have to sign. It's, it's pretty scary stuff, but, um, they hand delivered the script to my house, um, and signed for it. They didn't even email it to us. They hand delivered it. Um, and my mom woke me up at like, I was, I was sleeping and she woke me up and she just like threw the script on me. She's like, read it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's here. And I, I just like laid in bed and read the whole thing in the morning. And I was like, mom, I think I'm on like almost every page. This is crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really awesome. As Fai has a bunch of uh, turning moments on the story. He's the younger eternal. He has, she has a bunch of emotions that they're going through, through her. And while the, One of the things that stood out to me on, in, with her art was the Peter, the, the Peter Pan analogy, analogy. I want to talk about Sprite's mindset. In your opinion, what, what is you know, uh, Sprite's mindset when you know, Congo, uh, Kingo, uh, uh, give, give her that, what spoke to her about that analogy? Um, that was a really, really special scene to, like, to Chloe and to me and to Kamal. And we worked on it for a really long time before we even shot it. Um, And I think it was really a, like a like an almost like eye opening analogy for the audience and for for us for that like comparison. And I think it's a special moment because Sprite doesn't really open up. She's she's very you know stubborn and closed off because she's been hurt and she's she's dealing with so much. And I think it's it's just like a beautiful moment where she has a bit of vulnerability to Kingo. And and I think that also says something about their friendship because they are very close and they. And if you catch the little things here and there, we did spend time together in Macedonia. Um, and, I, and I think you get that like split second of, of like wanting in her, in her heart and in her eyes. And, and, and I think it's, it's just like a really special moment in the movie for her character, my character. <laughs> so the last act, um, we see Sprite making the decision of going with, with Icarus and, and Icarus. And that's also a really beautiful moment on, on Sprite's uh, art and, and, and the character. But, but in the end, when we have to use the in, in, in mind, we all, you know, even though she exploded on Cersei, you know, she, did she understand, you know, her mindset, did she understand that he had, she had to, you know, Icarus and herself, they had to let go of everything and they just need to do this in order to maintain, you know, human, the human race. Did, This right at the end understood what was when it didn't when it didn't happen. Yeah, Sp Sprite's motives um, and everything was was her hurt throughout her life, and I think well, you, she says it deep down. Deep down, she she actually loves humans. She envies them. She wants to be one, and she's so hurt and and devastated that all she wants is to forget. So she's doing everything she can so that we can let the emergence happen and, and our memories will be wiped and she won't have to deal with this, this pain that she carries. And she needs it and wants it so badly that she'll do anything. But of course she realizes that, that it was wrong and it was selfish. And, and you know, that, that, that's really hard for her. It's really hard for her to admit that she was wrong and same for Icarus. And that's why he does what he does. Um, because of the guilt and, and knowing like how, how horrible what he just did was so wrong. Um, and yes, at, at the end, I think she does understand that like it, it was the right thing to do. And I think she knew it all along. She was just sort of 
lying to herself because she was so desperate to to get out of this and get off of Earth and just be done with it? Uh, I think the last question has to be about Sprite becoming human. I think that was a social emotional moment between Cersei and Sprite, such a another another pivotal moment for her character. How much are you willing to explore that side of Sprite after you know after the uh, the, the Eternals? Are are you open to the idea? Are you are you you will be open? You will, what would you like to see? Oh, I. Obviously. Yeah, I, I don't know anything right now. Uh, they don't tell me anything. I I would love to see her on Earth. I would love to see where she's gone and what she's doing. I mean, maybe she's gone a little crazy. Maybe, maybe. I, I mean, I don't know. I like, I, th I think about it a lot, actually. I'm like, would she be a teenager? Would she be an adult? Like, I don't know when or if we'd shoot the next movie. So no idea. But um, I think about it a lot. I, I would be open to to just about anything. I think it's really, it's really exciting. I mean, to be in another Marvel movie, I'd be like, hell yeah, sign me up. <laughs> of course. Well, before I let you go, what, uh, what characteristics of Sprite do you see on yourself and what stuff of yourself do you put into Sprite? Um, I, I loved playing this character because I, I felt like her a lot. I mean, I, I've struggled with feeling stuck in being young and feeling older than I am. Um, so it, it, I think that's one of the reasons why Chloe chose me is because I think she saw that in me. And I've been working as an actor for a long time and with adults. And, you know, I, I haven't gone to a school, you know, I've been homeschooled. And, and so I think that um, that has made me grow up a lot faster than kids my age. And so I, I have struggled with that a lot of my life. And, and I really felt that I brought that pain into the character. And I really related to that with Sprite. Yeah, again, thank you for your time and really congratulations on the movie. I loved it. I mean, I see, I see, I see already seen it like five times already. I see that we saw it, saw it twice at the theaters. So, and with all my friends, so again, uh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it.